Hello fellow traders and YouTubers, thanks for um, tuning in. Now, I got asked to give my five uh, best tips for someone who wanted to get better um, at using Renko charts. Um, you know, what would it take? What do they need to do? To become a more successful trader using you know this quite unique Japanese style of you know, trading chart well that's what this video is all about I'm going to go through those five top tips for you here and also just bear in mind that I'm not going to go into the ins and outs completely I'm going to do this in conjunction with the playlist on my channel all about Renko trading you can see coming up just there um, I'll put a link to it at the end of this video so you can um, go in to that and trawl through it and pick out the finer detail otherwise we'll be here all day in this video but I want to give the five points concisely and then leave it up to you guys to follow up but essentially these five points are what I've you know, learn over the many years of using Renko charts to make my trading much better. So with that, let's get stuck in. Now, if we are following the strict rules of Renko technical analysis, then, you know, it shouldn't involve time. But you know, technology has changed, we move with the times, and if you do introduce time into your charts, it can create a whole host of new strategies and ideas um, into your trading. And with the beauty of Renko um, charting, making things a lot more clearer, it creates a very powerful tool indeed. Now, I know it's not, you know, for the purists maybe, but you know, with charts in packaging like TradingView, it's very easy to do. So I'm going to just take you through a few quick examples to show you what I mean. In essence, what we're doing here is, is sort of creating a new type of candlestick chart based on Renko by introducing time. Now I'm going to show you through um, this example in front of you using Bitcoin um, with a $100 uh, block size in all different time frames. On the left, we've got a one minute uh, Renko in the middle, one hour, then on the right, a one day. Now, if you're into wanting more um, granularity in your um, results, you want quicker price action, more signals, then the one, dropping the one, it down to a one minute chart will allow you to do this. Now, if you compare that to the one hour chart in the middle, you know, it's the same block size, but you're getting a whole different set of data. You notice more blocks now on the right to the less blocks there in the middle um, the the current block hasn't closed out yet whereas it has on the one minute chart so you can actually create strategies um, within strategies using this you know time-based approach i also like to use it as a trend filter as well if you go right to the right hand side you can see you know the blocks are going to change less um, because it's set to one day um, and 100 block size we can see a couple of blocks haven't cemented in. Well, actually, the price is turning up on the other charts. It's still pointing down here. So we could say, well, this is actually a trend filter. We're going to use the, the trend of the longer term versus the shorter term to filter out noise in our approach. So by adding in time, you can really, really create a whole host of new um, approaches. If you want to go day trading, scalping, you can... You know, drop the size, drop the block size, become more aggressive. You want longer term, use a longer term chart. I know, yes, it's not the strict rules of, you know, Renko, a technical analysis, but these charting packages these days, it's very hard to find one that actually just uses pure price action. Now, TradingView, very popular around the world, what we got here, you have to default it to some sort of time frame. So what one do you pick? Well, you know, I think it's down to the strategy you're using, um, what you want to achieve, what you want to get out, how much action you want to take from it. You know, what is your trading plan? But like I said, by 
utilizing time um, you know in my train I create price curves based off these times so you know I'll have a lot of uh, more up-to-date signals using the lower time frames you know cur curving out all the way out to say like a, a longer time frame to give me my trend direction so it's a it's like I say, it's a good all-round tool. It's worth investigating. There's um, videos on the channel that go into this in a lot more detail. So do do check out the playlist. But like I said, by introducing time into Renko charts, you can create really powerful, strong new strategies that you were never able to do. And when you look at them versus a candlestick chart, you know to me they are a lot clearer um, than some of the other alternatives you can use. Now to me the second point here is critical for you if you want to become a successful Renko trader. Now my big tip here is to make it as systematic as possible and Renko um, chart trading does allow you to create a systematic approach to um, creating block sizes. Got again in the playlist a whole host of videos on how to do this, even one specifically as you can see right there, um, how to you know get that right block size but I'm just going to dive back into that um, Bitcoin chart that we looked at just to show you what I mean by that so you've decided to follow my first point and you've introduced time to your charts we've got the one minute uh, Bitcoin and it's still set at that hundred dollar block size but is that the right size to use how do we know what is the right size and like I said it's critical for success in um, Renko trading getting the right block size so how do we actually do it now if I just brought up another chart very quickly and we set it to one minute as well just so we can show the um, comparisons right so let's then say we had a $500 block size on the Bitcoin you are going to get yourself a very different picture to that one on the left you're going to get maybe less trading signals with a 500 block size that's fine if it's in your strategy um, but on the left we got 100 so you're going to get a lot more price action in there you can see a whole different picture set there that only covers October by setting it to 100 by doing 500 we're going you know back you know to March of this year so a much bigger time period you can see the trends a lot better but you could be waiting a long time to actually get into a trade so you know getting the size you know right for blocks very important now how do you you know, actually physically do that in the chart well you know you can right click on the block and you go down to settings and what you've got your ATR now warning here ATR if you leave that it's obviously going to change the block size all the time so it's going to be very hard to back test the data so you do need some sort of fixed approach now you might think well you know the right block size to use but I like to do it systematically and scientifically and I bring in the volatility of the instrument so you might trade a lot of other instruments a hundred block size on Bitcoin might not be relevant for say if you're trading the Nasdaq 100 you need to factor in the um, underlying um, via ATR or historical volatility to get that right block size if you want to know the exact process that I use to come up with my block size it got a specific video with inside the playlist I suggest like I say you go away and watch that and it's going to teach you exactly how to come up with a more systematic approach to setting that block size so that I've got to emphasize again critical for your success to get this part right if you follow the old traditional rules of Renko trading where say for example the blocks go from red to green you buy and then green to red you sell I can tell you you will lose your money um, you can get whips all around you're going to get nowhere they don't work like that anymore what you have to do is enhance the probability of success by adding indicators price action tools on top of the charts um, like I said to increase the likelihood of you winning and for you also to be able to back test your strategies ideas 
um, and come up with new ideas and strategies for that matter um, based around adding on like I, I would well I call it adding like Western indicators maybe a stochastic um, a DMI a Bollinger Band on top of the Renko chart so you can add Fibonacci's trend lines all sorts of different things and again in that playlist I've got on the channel covers all these sort of ideas as well as strategy ideas for you but we're going to dive into a chart and I'm just going to show you what I mean so let's start with a new market we've got WTI crude oil here um, ticker CL1 50 cents block size you can see just pure price action if you followed those signals like we mentioned just a minute ago you know red to black black to red um, that's the color setup I use um, stop hunter colors um, you're going to lose you can see that quite obviously but what I like to do is what I call add the western approach to the Japanese way of doing things by enhancing the probability of success by adding my own indicators on top for example you know stochastic you could put on there um, change the settings to um, one that I like to use um, let's just do that I like to use a 533 here and on the channel lots of videos there in that playlist on strategies and the indicators I use and how I utilize them but just quickly with this one you can see you know, stochastic crosses you know price reverses you know it's as simple as that uh, you know we've got another moving on up there yeah you know, the price moves on up not so much um, down there as well you can spend all day doing this and adding on indicators um, to use here. Uh, I have found that another good thing with the Renko charts is that a lot of the indicators do work on these charts. So, you know, just try your own selection out, really. Um, you could even put on uh, Bollinger Bands, for example. Let's just have a quick look at that. Bollinger Bands. There you go. You could come up with some Bollinger Band strategy around the Renko making it a lot clearer than, say, a candlestick chart. How about even something like Ichimoku? Maybe um, use the cloud uh, as a filter for the long and short trades. Let's just tidy that up. Get rid of the settings there. Uh, what do we want? We want that off leaving us the cloud let's make that a bit more colorful so we can see it e more easily um, there we go you could say for example if the price is above it's a buy if it's below it's a sell something as you know simple as that um, also as we will touch on in a minute things like risk management support resistance levels we can get on their Fibonacci yeah you know, it is a great um, tool for Renko charts a great tool for um, drawing you know using the drawing tools um, let's just get that out there let's tick on some of those so we can see the levels but you know, like I said you know targets you know, stop loss areas for you just see and for analysis of price action see what key numbers are what aren't um, there you go, you can, I've got Fibonacci ladder in there, you can quite clearly straight away see that maybe this level at $82 and a bit is an important number, you know, again around here. Use that, you can use trend lines, simple trend lines, you know, moving averages, you know, just put on a simple moving average to help you, you know, enter, buy, sell, exit from trades. There's so many combinations you can do and on top of that you also have price patterns um, I said the you know, heads and shoulders might stand out more you know reversals you know double bottoms double tops treble bottoms treble top that sort of thing is also very prevalent and easier to see in um, Renko charts so put together the combination of stuff test it out um, but if you want a head start like I said get to that playlist and work your way through the list of ideas I've got there. Now I find that using the Renko chart allows me to come up with a more systematized approach to trade management. Now it's all well and good having a great strategy idea but the execution management to that finish line 
also massively important. Where should your stop go? Should you use a stop? You know, a whole host of questions um, there. Where's the price targets? Um, again, I've got a good playlist that's integrated into the um, Renko playlist. It's all about the you know creating your you know stop loss type approach to Renko, and I like to use volatility in there the market and add in again a time period from a you know, holding time period of my trade on top of that to try and get the best solution to make the trade work rather than maybe being too tight on my stop and you know getting knocked out it's very uh, it's it's less clear than say a, a bar chart or a candlestick chart the price action because everything's hived away inside the block so so if you're new to trading you might get caught out there so having like i said a systematized approach to um, trade management in Renko charts, massively important. Now watch this play, you know, uh, video there um, for you know a head start on how I go about setting up, um, like I said, my risk management approach to Renko charts and then work it in around the other videos in that list. But let's just have a quick look at a chart to get an idea. Now everyone has a fixed approach to getting into their trade, but you know quite a lot of you ignore the crucial element of uh, trade and risk management here. Now we've got our crude oil chart in here again. Now I'll just say, for example, you know we're in this zone here, and I think that the market is going to go down there. Now most people might just come in and go, "Oh, I'll put a stop loss there," but actually. I've started by working out first of all what the volatility of crude oil is and where do I need to be away from the price for my trade to work so it might actually come out to say here now that might be too far away so what I do is I enhance further using the Renko charts I might pull out for example the Fibonacci's um, see what sort of key levels we have here where I could maybe you know, hone in the levels further so like I said, we've gone to here, and um, we can see the number there above that $92 might be too far. So, but we've got this key 61.8 Fibonacci line down at 90. So then you can pull it in again further. Now, like I said, the Renko charts, because of their clarity and ease of use, allow you to do this more similarly. You can spot these key price levels and patterns. You need also put volume at price. On here, I've got a video on that one as well, so you can see where the interest is at the price levels, which is better than having it along the bottom axis, in my opinion. But, like I said, critical for success and to create it in a systematic, you know, approach that you can also back test and test to see whether that approach works. Step one: work out the volatility. That's where you start with your stop, then refine in. You know, using you know X, Y, Z indicators, tools to do so. Get automated, system, you know, systematized, consistent, and you'll do a lot better in your trading. And point five might sound very obvious to you, but it is often overlooked. There are a lot of rubbish um, technical analysis packages out there that don't give you the optionality. Um, to be able to manipulate Renko, like we've seen in the few examples I've shown in this video, you know, adding indicators, drawing on top, utilizing that into turning into a strategy. Can your charting package let you do that? Does it work in you know the different time frames, the markets, you know, all those things that we've seen? And there are a limited number of chart packages out there that can do the job. Are you you been using TradingView in this um, video? And it suits what I want to like to do very well. I've also automated it myself, you know, programmed it out, so I've got my own version. But there are other packages out there. Feel free to ask me in the comments below. You know what I think works well for the world of Renko. Happy to advise there. Um, so you know it's like I said, that last one rounds it up. It's obvious, but you know without it, without the functionality. Um, that we've discussed the points that you'll find in my um, YouTube playlist on Renko, then you're going to be struggling getting nowhere with the Renko charts. Even simple stuff like setting the block size. You know, if you can't you know, manipulate that data and use it effectively, then 
like I said, you're going to be banging your head against the wall. Now, before we go, let's just have a quick look at that playlist so you can sort of get an idea of the sort of content that you could, you know, get your teeth stuck into. So here you go. Here's that playlist that I talked about. Starts with, you know, five great reasons for using Ranko charts. Then this is the real big one with the light blue thumbnail there. It gives you, you know, it's a definitive free course into... Um, the world of Renko trading and then I've broken it down a lot further after that the questions I get asked over time within the channel um, trading strategy ideas that I use and um, utilize myself also um, as you, well let's just get in a bit more detail there um, let's find some of those strategies this one here you know zip high win rate um, simple setup you know, if you're struggling for your own ideas, use uh, maybe something like that. But also got other things. You know, you're talking about charting packages. The fifth point. You know, how do you set up your Renko charts? It's all in there. Um, that block size. You know, getting the right block size. We talked about that. Volume. Um, we can use VWAP um, day trading strategy. There. It's another idea. How to get Fibonacci's to work on your charts. You're getting the right time frames. Um, set up we talked that right at the beginning of this video how to draw trend lines how to build your own automated well how i built my own automated renko trading custom software and the results i got there some further strategy ideas some other um, hacks that i use secret hacks like donkey and um, breakouts um, how you can actually copy my own trading if you don't want to do any of this i run a copy trading service called igox um, you can check that out on www.igox.co.uk and I utilise Renko in that. Um, how to put volume on your charts, um, some chart patterns that you need to know about, a scalping strategy, how you can introduce currency strength and Renko together to find the best Forex pairs to trade, how you can get Renko charts and MT5, you know, Renko wick trains, derivatives of this type of chart and that um, stop loss trading strategy that i utilize as well inside the renko world and like i said i'm always adding to this as well so it's going to grow so it's always worth you following um the channel as i enhance this out further so there you go my five tips to hopefully take your renko trading chart um, usage to the next level now i've been using renko charts for decades very profitably i think they're a fantastic chart tool getting better and better with the advent of more advanced software something out there if you want to try and get an edge in your trading it's sitting there waiting for you to experiment with and like i said got that fantastic playlist for you so to give you you know abundance of ideas to get you on that road to successful trading and that playlist is coming up right now